Max. 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 Okay. Once again, tension and confusion gripped the Chinese capital as it woke from a night of defiance and fear. When dawn broke in Beijing, the government had made no move to dislodge the students from Tiananmen Square, and many in the crowd saw that as a victory. They had expected the army to make its move overnight. It was the second day of martial law, but the government troops can't get close enough to Beijing to enforce it. Tens of thousands of people again swarmed over troop convoys in a scene reminiscent of the people power movement that brought change to the Philippines. Take it easy, they told soldiers. You are the people's army and we are the people. They offered soldiers sweets and beer, holding up the troops at five of the seven major roads leading into the city and raising doubts about Premier Li Peng's ability to crack down on China's growing movement for democracy. As the students chanted, sang and shouted their demands for democratic rule, so did some foreign tourists caught up in the demonstration. They believe that if national leaders were to do something desperate like impose economic sanctions, that that would help their cause. A nationwide news blackout now remains in force with Chinese reporters saying they too are forbidden to report the event. All the people at Radio Beijing, and I, I also believe at all the uh, departments of radio, television and film ministry feel strongly that they must support the students here. Apart from warning the students to disperse, Chinese television is doing little more except rerunning Friday's speech by Premier Li Peng, calling for a crackdown on the protest movement. The students say they expect some show of force tonight or tomorrow, and that for that they're prepared. It's now ten days since the students took over Tiananmen Square shaking the very foundations of China's Communist Party and nine nights waiting for the party to strike back. Tim Skinner, Seven Nightly News. Again tonight, the streets of Beijing are not a safe place to be. Just how unsafe was brought dramatically close a short time ago when a BBC television news crew headed by reporter Kate Aidy was arrested bashed and their camera destroyed by plain-clothes security forces as they were preparing a story for British television news. In the heart of Beijing, dozens of armed personnel carriers bristling with soldiers have been making random sweeps up and down the main boulevard, spraying bursts of machine gun fire in all directions. Today we've seen for the first time the government's own version of the result of the raid on ten and men. The government used this report to justify its imposition of martial law and its decision to maintain the troops in the city. In the report shown around China again today, soldiers of the 27th Army said how they, and not the students, were the real victims of the attack at Tiananmen. Today it's been another scramble to get out of the city. Since early morning it's been America's turn to evacuate non-essential embassy staff, their families and American workers and tourists have been trying since the weekend to leave. And it's now as tourists leave that the horror stories start to emerge. Three young girl students knelt down in front of him and begged him to stop firing and he killed them. And an old gentleman put his hand up because he wanted to cross the road and he shot him. And then his magazine of his gun was empty so he tried to reload and the crowd jump came in and hang, hung him from a tree. Tonight in Beijing, it appears the students are preparing for some new kind of showdown. The numbers dwindled to about 20,000 yesterday, but all day we've seen wave after wave of students return to the square. They're coming back on foot, on bicycles, on motorbikes and on the backs of trucks. At the moment there are probably between 80 and 90,000 back on the square. The tension on the streets has eased compared with a week ago, but the tension in the corridors of power remains high. There's talk tonight that there may be a climax soon in the battle between the moderates and the hardliners. The very fact that the television transmissions remain cut for the second time is some sign that the hardliners are flexing their muscles. The problem here is that there's no reliable source of news. The government is saying nothing official, the army is saying nothing at all, and all the students are saying is that they'll stay put until Premier Li Peng is removed from office. 
There are no signs of the troops at all on Tenement Square, but we've just heard that they're poised outside the capital somewhere, warning the students to end their protest and ready to move in if they're ordered to. If the troops are deployed in Tenement Square, the possibility of bloodshed, even civil war, remains as China survives its 14th day of this extraordinary convulsion. Tim Skinner in Beijing, the News World. Hello. The most wanted man in China is Feng Li Zhe, an internationally known scientist and one of China's most outspoken critics.